traders from around the world what's going on you're about to get an amazing stock review from this guy right here david potvin enjoy this video so watch out traders from around the world it's jeremy alexander newsom that video was david potvin the algo master and ricky cadden the real life trading australia ambassador and that's where i am of course in australia byron beach uh, byron bay australia to be exact i'll be here uh, for another two weeks and crushing some markets. Let's check out the SPY and then the E-minis and then two or three stocks. Then I'm going to hand over to Ricky and then Ricky's going to do two or three and then hand over to David. The SPY making new all-time highs yesterday. Looking like a flag pattern. Most likely going to pull back and get a dip buying opportunity. Hashtag buy the dip is strong. Weekly chart. One, two, three, four. White candles in a row. I fully expect still. For the SPY to eventually come back and retest this $300 price range. I don't know when it will. Whenever it happens, I'm bullish. Tesla, a lot of traders requesting Tesla. Here is my notes on TSLA. Pretty simple, but looking to slowly leg into some positions as Tesla pulls back. I love Tesla long term. A lot of demand growing here in Australia specifically. And I can see it firsthand as I talk to people all around this gorgeous continent. So something to keep in mind. Square and Roku earnings are around the corner. My thoughts on Square. A December $70 call would probably be the best way to play it. Because if Square does gap up on earnings, it's going to be a very strong gap up. And if it gaps down, it most likely will gap down, trap some people, make a new low, trap even more people, and then bounce higher. That's just my thoughts. I could be incorrect on that on Square, of course, but the long-term moving averages, we're going to be in the middle. We're going to hang out. We're going to trade sideways for a while on Square, unless, of course, we open above 64.50 and a half on ticker symbol SQ. Roku, probably best to do a straddle on this one. 160 November 15th long call for 390 and the 120 long put for 350. If Roku opens below 121 on earnings, it's going to rampage lower. And if Roku gaps above, realistically, 155 on earnings, you're going to see Roku just absolutely go gangbusters. Here's Uber. Uber gapped down on some interesting number earnings. This is what Mr. Squiggles thinks Uber is going to do. Actually, pretty decent gap down, trapping everyone who bought this day and who bought this day, which had a lot of volume. So some people are trapped on Uber, although I still do really like the numbers on earnings, believe it or not, even though, yes, they are losing money. There are some really interesting growth numbers behind the scenes on Uber. So a lot of people have been asking me how to play it. And again, my opinion, tiptoe into earnings, uh, tiptoe into the stock over the long term. Buy 10 shares every three weeks. Long term, be an owner, not just a consumer. If you want to be, I actually had a challenge uh, with a fare that I did on Uber just the other day and it got resolved immediately and everything got taken care of effectively, quickly, simply. I loved it, loved the process, very happy about it. So long term, I do expect Uber to start bouncing, but it's not going to happen right now. And here's Shake Shack. I think Shake Shack's going to go a tad lower after some interesting retest. It did have massive volume, but here is a clip from yesterday's afternoon swing training room on Shake Shack. Shake Shack, ladies and gentlemen, Shake Shack is gapping down on earnings. So it had a massive run up and is now doing what Shake Shack does, which is volatility move. This is a super fun, wild and crazy, pretty intense stock to trade, and I like it. So Shake Shack gapping down. 15% has a huge gap down. Now, there are a lot of people trapped on Shake Shack, and I do actually expect it to continue a little bit lower. So again, I don't think I'll be day trading this one tomorrow, but what I would expect is a retest, um, a trade down, a pop higher, and then eventually some slow methodical runs lower so i wouldn't specifically be trying to fade this one tomorrow uh, until later in the day because you have everyone from this gap right here on august 6th they are trapped today's candle had a good breakout look and they got trapped so so yep really nice gap perfect retest of the 200 nice failure amazing opportunity to short 
right at the 200, 71.43 by 72.43 would have been a $1 stop on Shake Shack and then it just absolutely plummeted. Could have gotten four or five R's off of that exact setup on Shake Shack. So a lot of earnings. Earnings season is still here in full swing, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for all the real life traders who've been joining over the last two or three weeks. It's really exciting to have you all on board and RLT has turned five today. That's right, five years old. And someone was asking me how many stock reviews I've done to date and the answer is approximately a thousand since I'm doing about one every single day for the last five years. All good stuff, all growth, all amazing opportunities, and shout outs to my brand new coaching student who reached out to me today, my good friend Bob from Minnesota. I'll be working with you. Uh, me and Bob will be teaming up in about 40 hours from me making this video. So now I'm gonna hand the computer over to my boy Ricky Cadden who turned 31 today. So this is gonna be his birthday stock review and then David the Robot Potvin will be taking over for a quick review on Kroger. Thank you for that amazing introduction, Jeremy. Yes, it is my birthday, guys, turning 31, the big 3 1. Uh, let's take a look at the Aussie markets. The all odds not doing a whole lot. We are kind of squeezing here in this very, very cute ascending wedge right here. So if you are looking at playing this bullish, probably wait for a, another pullback. Uh, I do expect us to get a small cute little pullback probably back down to the 100 as the markets are trending a little bit higher and probably could do uh, are probably due for another pullback do have a few stocks i want to look at uh ticker symbol c u v which is oh this is the australia us market c u v ticker symbol c u v clinical uh, pharmaceuticals we have had a very very nice retest gap just last month and ironically we are pulling back to the 100 simple moving average we do we have not currently pulled back to close the gap completely if you take a look at the weekly chart uh, not a whole lot of volume volume is dying off so if I was looking to get in bullish I probably would look to buy the dip around $24 so that's CUV, and another one I would like to take a look at is Near Map, uh, ticker symbol NEA, and having a glorious pullback, beautiful trend on the weekly chart, and on the daily chart, we are still struggling to get above the 100 and the 200 simple moving average. Most likely going to consolidate down here, guys, um, but if you are looking to go long, uh, I think you have a little bit more time most likely look to buy the dip around 236 on the weekly. Uh, I do think that would be an amazing trend dip buying opportunity. Let's take a look at APT. Now, I have been speaking about this for a while, guys. I do want to keep this in the back of your mind as this is an amazing company to invest in long term. And we have had an amazing pullback closing below the 100 simple and we are actually below this low right here that we did have uh, back in October. So, guys, buy the dip. Great, great company. Great fundamentals. We, on the weekly chart, probably could come down a little bit lower. Uh, so, a nice dip buying opportunity would be around 23.38 if you are looking to go long uh, in the near future. Wouldn't be an Australian stock review without looking at CBA. Commonwealth Bank of Australia and would you look at this guys on the daily chart bouncing off the 200 on the daily chart uh, would not have expected that at all on the weekly chart uh, on the weekly chart though guys we did come down to the 200 and we are forming a very very glorious bullish candle on the weekly chart so definitely look to buy the dip on this one Let's take a look at some commodities guys here's here's gold and we are Looking fairly sideways still. I have said that most likely we will trade sideways until the 100 simple does come back into play. Uh, we are back down at 1483. Does look like an amazing uh, dip buying opportunity on this one. And we'll take a look at crude oil. 
Crude oil having a little bit of trouble getting above the 200 on the daily chart. We are pulling back some. Uh, I do expect this to pull back a little bit. I will uh, we'll most likely be looking to set up a small short-term little bearish, a short-term little bearish swing trade back down to the 100, and then look to buy the dip. And last but not least, we'll take a look at the Aussie dollar. Uh, I did get triggered into a bearish swing trade and did get stopped out the next day. Um, so right now guys, we are just consolidating around here. So just look to um, sell high and buy low. Not a whole lot of consolidate, uh, not a whole lot, just a little bit of consolidation here. This is a very big double bottom on a weekly chart. So just bear that in mind. We could potentially break out, um, although with all the interest rate cuts that are happening at the moment here in Australia, I don't expect that to just scream bullish. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Roboman, David Popvern, and we'll take it from there. Hey, guys, it's David here. Um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, we actually do have a few algo traders at Real Life Trading. Um, I haven't been trading much actually the last couple of days. I've been here hanging out with Jeremy. Um, so we'll take a look at Kroger here. We'll pull this up on the daily. Um, now, the normally I play breakouts on the earnings season. So if I had this bot turned on in the last couple of days, I would have played the breakout right here on, oh, how do we move that here? Sorry about that. I would have played this breakout right in the five minute, would have gotten long here and I would have gotten my stop right here and would have made 2R on this pretty quickly. Um, that's normally how I play that on the earnings. I would have the bearish robot doing the exact same thing on a gap down. Um, so for those of you who are looking at this, uh, just playing this normally without the robots, we could see here that we've actually tested and closed the gap back from March here on Kroger. Um, for looking for what to do now, I would see how we react. Um, obviously, everyone who has been long since March, most likely we're looking at taking some profits today as we close this gap. So are we going to continue higher? It's very possible we could look for a small pullback maybe at the 26 levels and look to uh, play, uh, ride this thing higher. Um, otherwise, I think that's it for today. I'll pass it on over to Jeremy and he can wrap this up. Boom! What a pro! Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Three real life traders in Byron Bay, Australia, giving you a stock view, giving you our thoughts. Thanks so much for enriching lives with us across the world and for watching this review. Ladies and gentlemen, you are amazing and incredible. We'll see you later. And until next time, love, life, love, life, trade, life. Hello, welcome. I'm Adam with RLT. We're at today's stock review, real life training. And uh, we are at Coogee Beach, Australia. Woo! You guys rock. Awesome. Enjoy.